Hello, meaners, and everybody else who is watching this video. Um, you're gonna have to be patient with me if I'm a little bit quiet, especially at the beginning, because some of my roommates are still home, and I'm a little bit self-conscious about talking out loud. So we're just going to have to hope that none of them walk in and judge me for talking to myself in a giant cat head, because that's a little bit awkward. Anyway, I have recently reached 500 followers on Furry Amino and have recently added these eyeballs to my head, which is great. So in suppression, I have decided to do a Q&A. So I asked you guys to ask me some questions and I will be answering those today. You're going to have to pardon me because I'm going to have to lean in really close to my screen to read the questions through these uh, buckram eyes. Um, it's kind of hard to see from back here, but I will do my best to not look super awkward and I will answer those now. So, without further ado to the first question, let's start with something simple. Alright, Electric Cheetah Paws asks, what is your favorite food, color, and animal? Uh, my favorite food is good old classic cheese pizza. Don't really care much for toppings. I mean, I guess I do like a little bit of basil on my pizza if and when available, but uh, generally just some good old cheese will do. Uh, my favorite color is blue. Surprise, surprise. My uh, blue fur here. My favorite animal is, another surprise, a cat. Wow. <laughs> I know, I'm really original. Um, Alright, moving on to the next question. Let's see here. Minky the cat, hi Minky, one of my uh, first friends on Amino, asks, How did you get so good at art, and how long have you been doing art? Love your art, Natty K. Oh, thank you, Minky. Um, I've been doing art pretty much since I could pick up a pencil. Um, I wouldn't be me anymore if I wasn't doing art. But, um, there's couple different ways to get good at art. The main thing is just to practice, 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 practice. The more you practice, the better you will get. I know people say that all the time, that's what you always hear, but it is true. Okay? Uh, they say it a lot for a reason. And more so, I think it's important to draw from life, okay? Even if you want to be a cartoonist or do crazy stylized stuff, it's important to know the basics know the rules before you break them, okay? A lot of young artists fall into this trap where they're like, oh, I'm just gonna do cartoon art, you know, it's it's fine, I don't want to learn all that boring realism stuff, that's, that's not what I want to do. You need to do it, okay? Um, I'm not saying that you need to be able to just do a perfect anatomical, muscular, skeletal structure drawing perfectly off the top of your head, no. But if you understand the basics of how things go together, how things move together, how lines work, how um, a perspective works, how composition, color theory work, then you'll be able to do better art. Whether you're doing cartoony art or realistic art, it doesn't matter. Um, that's the most important part, and oh no, my questions went away. One moment. And we yeah, learn, learn your basics, that's a good thing to know. Alright, going along, uh, Artha Demon, hi Artha, asks, when did you start drawing? What was your biggest, what is your biggest inspiration for art, and what are your favorite subjects to draw? Uh, this is pretty similar to the previous question, but like I said, I've been drawing pretty much as long as I can remember, and I wouldn't be me anymore if I wasn't drawing something here and there. Um, my biggest inspirations? Hmm, ah, uh, that's hard to say, because I have a lot, but I'd say... One thing I really like working with is characters, um, characters and how they interact and how they react and kind of stuff like that. I'm a little bit less into doing stuff that's more mechanical, I like something more organic and fun and flowy. So I really like working with that, that's why I want to be a character animator and not so much of an effects animator. And uh, what are my favorite subjects to draw? It really depends on the day. <laughs> I like to draw, so I, I'd say I often come back to drawing creatures a lot. Things like uh, cats and wolves and foxes. I know it sounds really dumb and I do draw other things, but those are good defaults that I like to go back to because they're cute animals and they're easy to draw and I like to interpret them in different ways. Um, so there is that. Lady Zin asks, how do you pick your color schemes? Oh well, that's 
also kind of a hard one because I don't really have a set method. I'm not actually that good, but um, one thing that I sometimes do is if I'm having trouble picking out colors, especially like for an outfit for like a human character, sometimes I'll just go to Google and um, search color schemes and see what comes up and sometimes I'll get something good and I'll see if I can work with that. Uh, otherwise, it tends to have things to do with uh, just colors that I like and what goes nice together in my opinion. For example, um, I really like the colors blue and pink and yellow, especially all pastel. I like how that looks together, so I'll use that a lot. Um, there's also the idea of what fits for a character. So like a darker character will have darker colors, or a more happy-go-lucky character will have maybe cheery, bright pastel colors. Uh, it all depends on what matches their personality as well as their species. If they're an animal, you know, I could get inspiration from that. There's all sorts of different ways where you can pick color schemes. Another good kind of um, rule, I don't always follow this rule perfectly, but I found it online once and it's been very helpful, is to pick one primary color that's going to be your bright color and that will be your most saturated and then every other color, the farther away you get on the color wheel, the more desaturated that has to be, if that makes sense. So if you have a character whose main color is blue and you want to add some orange, unless you're tempering that orange with a neutral, like black or white or gray, the orange is going to have to be very desaturated and it'll still read as orange because it's next to the blue which contrasts it but it'll look better than 100% saturation blue, 100% saturation orange, BAM! That kind of hurts your eyes usually. So that's a good idea to keep in mind that I sometimes do. Um, Ash Wolf Forever writes, What do you feel actually defines a furry? Okay, so the most basic definition of a furry is somebody who likes anthropomorphic animals. Be it animals who talk, walk on two legs, wear clothes, that kind of thing. I would add to that definition somebody who likes anthropomorphic animals and wants to be labeled as a furry. I don't think we should force labels onto people who do not want them, especially a label that is so prone to being hated as this. But yeah, the most basic definition of a furry is just somebody who likes anthropomorphic animals and wants to be part of the fandom, quote unquote. And going along with that, Dream Seeker asks, what do you think about the negative stereotype associated with furries? Well, obviously, I am not a fan of it because they are simply not true. Um, for those of you who don't know, the main negative stereotypes associated with furries is one, they're all about sex, which is definitely not true, and two, they're all old sweaty men living in their parents' basements, which is also not true. Uh, sincerely, a college student, a uh, female virgin <laughs> living in an apartment at school. So, neither of those are true. I think they're very unfortunate that they exist because a lot of people think that there's this dirty aspect to this um, hobby that simply isn't there. Yes, there are people who use it that way, they exist, but unfortunately those kind of people exist in just about every group. It's not a phenomenon unique to furries, and I think it's very frustrating that people kind of assume that if they know nothing else about us. It's very, very not cool. I wish it did not exist, but what can you do? So, Ava Robinson asks, what do you think attracts storms? Do you think it relates to the attra how attractive or ugly a person is? Well, obviously, ugly people attract storms. This is a proven scientific fact, and if you do not believe me, you are wrong. Disclaimer, this stems from the inside joke that I have had with Ava Robinson for the past several years. It is not meant to provoke fun at anybody who is struggling with storm-related issues or has self-esteem issues surrounding their appearance. It is a joke. Do not be offended, please. Alright, I think we've only got one more question left. So, Infinitive Pancake asks, Hey Natty K, hi Infinitive Pancake. I was wondering how you were introduced to the furry community. Keep up the good work. Um, thank you Infinitive Pancake. Okay, so, my induction to this fandom is kind of a long story. I've pretty much always liked animals from the time I was very young. Um, as my mom puts it, all of my heroes had four legs. Uh, I was never really into the princess movies. Out of all the Disney movies, I liked all the animal movies like Aristocats, 101 Dalmatians, uh, Lady and the Tramp, uh, Lion King, Balto, all of those. So from the time I was very young, I was always into animals and loved drawing animals and stuff like that. When I was around maybe 9 or 10, I started getting into the world of online art, and specifically a website called Baltosaurus. Oh golly. 
And on this website, I discovered people who made OCs. And I was like, well, that's super cool. I want in on this kind of stuff. And I saw people making uh, fursonas, which, you know, an animal representation of yourself. And I was like, well, that's just the bomb.com. And I wanted to make one of those. And so I did, and I would draw all my OCs, and I was super cringy about it because I was 10, and there was all this stuff going on. Now, there was one user on Baltasaurus, his name was Dragon Drawer, who drew primarily anthro art. And I thought that was super cool because I really liked how he handled anatomy and his, his animals with the clothes, and I thought it was really cool. And I wanted to draw like that, and I would copy his art because that's what kids do when I was a kid. And I would try to draw my characters as anthros from time to time, and I thought it was really cool. And this is probably the point where you're thinking, ah, so this is where you found is you saw this art and you looked for more and boom there it was well not quite you see well I still liked his anthro art and I liked drawing my characters that way from time to time it didn't really settle in as my main interest I still drew primarily feral characters and I didn't really know I hadn't really heard the term furry and ultimately I wound up just moving on it was just kind of a side thing fast forward a little bit to middle school I'm still drawing mostly feral animals and I'm still making OCs and I'm having fun with it I did get a very brief brush with the furry fandom in the form of a documentary I don't remember what it was called but they showed a brief scene that involved a furry convention and I was like well those that's pretty cool those uh, first things that, that looks pretty fun I might want to try that but I figured my mom pretty probably wouldn't let me because that's a big project and it's probably expensive so I never really told anybody about it and sure enough it just kind of oh here's my interest uh, it's waning again and I move on to other things so I kind of pushed it aside again and focused on other characters and other interests um, going along with that around middle school was when I started um, getting into things like Avatar was my main fandom for a while and with that I started drawing humans for the first time seriously and for quite a while throughout middle school and then high school I was getting more serious about drawing people and while I still loved animals and drawing animals um, it wasn't my uh, main focus for quite a while it was kind of pushed to the side so I would start seeing things more and more now I was getting older and getting into other websites talking about furries and often from the people I follow on Tumblr like anti-furry stuff but I mean most of it was a joke because these same people post a lot of anti-anime stuff despite being anime fans themselves but I would just kind of look at it and be like oh, I'm not really sure if I agree with this but you know what whatever um, it's not really my thing right now I'm just gonna move on so I did until one fateful day um, a couple months ago I was on YouTube and I had a little recommended video in my box that was a fursuiter and I was like oh it's that thing and didn't really think much of it but after a while it kept showing up in my recommended and finally I was like okay guess I'll watch this video so I watched the video and I was like you know what this is this is pretty legit I think I'm gonna watch some more so I did and that's how I got addicted to furry YouTube and from there I was like you know what this uh, this fursuiting thing it looks, it looks like a lot of fun so I decided to go back and revamp my fursona for the first time in years and I was like, you know, I, I think I want to try making a, a fursuit. So I did, and it was fun. And I was like, well, although I do, uh, I'm not like super duper crazy, but if I've got a fursuit, I can't really not call myself a furry anymore. So that's how I got involved with the fandom. And then I joined like Furry Amino and started posting it on DeviantArt and stuff. So uh, yeah, that is the long, long story. So I guess kind of like what the other question was saying, it goes back to how you define a furry. Uh, if you define it as just somebody who likes animals, then you could say that I was one from the time I was born, practically. If you call it somebody who has a fursona then but since I was 11 you call it somebody who will who wants to be part of the community it's only been like a few months but there you go so yeah I guess that about covers it so that was kind of a kind of a lengthy answer um, I apologize for the fact that some of these questions were a little bit uh, scatterbrained um, I'm not using a true script because it's very hard to read in this head uh, um, I did have answers planned I'm not sure how well I articulate them. I'm going to practice 
you know, doing this kind of thing. Um, I do want to make more videos. I have a whole list of topics planned. Uh, I don't want to do them all right away, partially because then I'd be out of ideas and partially because I do plan to remake this suit uh, after I get a little more experience under my belt and one of the um, renovations I'd like to add would be a moving jaw which will be a lot more fun to watch on a video and I know it's not a requirement on videos to have like a nice suit like that but I think it would look just better and more fun to watch. So I am planning on that. I will post progresses of any suits I make as well as art that I do on Furry Amino and also his Nan Deviant art for fitness pictures so you can watch me in both those locations. Um, I apologize again for my uh, inconsistent uh, speaking. It always sounds cooler in my head, so sorry about that. I'm hoping that by doing these videos I'll be able to improve my, I guess, charisma for lack of a better term and not stutter so much because that is a problem that I have and I'd really like to not have that particular problem. So anyway, thank you so much for asking your questions and for watching this video. And if you want to see more, please consider leaving a comment. Uh, comments give me life. And uh, yeah, thank you. Bye!